So hi, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Thanks for joining today. I'm Ira, and uh, I'm uh, excited to, to share some of the updates uh, that are coming to the uh, HyperWorks Design Explorer for 2022.3. So let me go ahead and do that. So I have um, a fairly brief presentation today, but uh, we have a set of enhancements to that that I want to share. Uh, that you can see a summary of here. A couple of these are improvements to or expansion of existing features. Uh, a couple are brand new and will, I think, allow users to use DE in a more general way, uh, removing, uh, I hope, uh, some minor limitations that prevented certain use cases or certain users, certain use cases from being supported or certain users from using DE. Uh, hopefully, we've we've kind of whittled you know, whittled down those limitations or, or, or hopefully even eliminated them or removed them. Uh, a couple of these are usability related. And then one at the end, which I think is really exciting, uh, is an enhanced use of some of the artificial intelligence uh, in, in Design Explorer. It's a revamping and update to the clustering feature, uh, which was there in previous versions of DE, but was somewhat hidden uh, and, and somewhat more limited before. So it's been kind of revamped. Um, and, and I think made more prominent, more exciting, uh, more useful, and, and still kind of evolving with an eye towards uh, the full implementation of expert AI inside of Design Explorer. But we'll, we'll get to that one at the end. Um, anyway, that's kind of the, uh, the, the, the list of, of topics and the agenda. So let, let's jump in and uh, just kind of look at each of those in turn uh, with, through a quick, uh, a quick uh, demonstration of each to kind of give you an idea uh, of what each one brings to the to the to the tools. Uh, so the first is property assignment um, uh, design variable. So it's a new uh, you can see indicated here a new uh, a new tool or a new context in the ribbon, a uh, new type of design variable that allows um, an element or component properties to vary within an exploration. So for those already familiar uh, with Design Explorer or some of the existing design variables, this is somewhat is very similar to the material. Uh, design variable, which, uh, as you know, today you can pick a, a part or component or, or, or uh, entity in, in 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 your session, and then choosing its material allow allow its material to be uh, to be varied throughout the uh, the exploration, and, and does so by creation of a a categorical variable where the material assignment uh, can change. So this is a kind of a generalized extension of that, where you can uh, you can basically uh, allow a, a property to vary uh, on any element or set of elements or component uh, in, in the model. So, for example, maybe 1D properties, if you have different section properties, uh, or, or maybe a list of, of valid or, or possible uh, bushing C elas or, 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 or uh, sorry, P elas or, or, um, or, or P bush kind of cards, you can you can vary those throughout your your exploration. So let's take a look at a a quick example in a video here that does essentially that. Uh, in this in this example, uh, we have uh, the the air the fuselage here, uh, and you can see that for this uh, for the different frame components or stringers, uh, maybe there's different sets of of sections that you want to uh, evaluate. So using the new uh, property design variable, you can pick the component. In this case, we'll pick one of the frame components, and say that it can use any of those. Uh, frame properties as its property throughout the uh, the DOE. So kind of just that simple, we'll show it there. There's the uh, design variable and you can see the properties have been created as a categorical variable. So throughout the exploration, the property assignment, in that case, ID one, two, or three uh, can be chosen and used and you can use that in a DOE or an optimization. So pretty simple, but um, again, a, a generalized extension of the material uh, design variable that's already there and hopefully uh, opens up some additional use cases uh, for for users. Uh, next, design variable link enhancements. So we're previously able to to create links between design variables. Um, again, for those familiar, I think the let me let I'll just let the video play through here. I think it actually shows what I'm going to describe here um, in previous versions in in up until 2022.2, as you'll see and, and maybe recall, uh, when creating design variable links, uh, we could link design variables to one another. When you click in the link field there, you get a list of similar kinds of design variables, so only thickness variables if, if a thickness variable is selected, and then you can link to that variable, ensuring that the, the values will remain equal throughout the exploration. Um, what we've done for 2022.3 is we've uh, expanded this functionality. So now when you click here, 
you get this dialog where you see a list of all the variables so you can create more general links uh, than before and you can enter in uh, expressions uh, if if you want so just in this example setting to uh, setting one thickness to be the the average of of two more uh, I've purposely left in uh, an error here in the field and you can see we do some error checking and it notifies me that I've I've missed a, a close parentheses for example or my expression is invalid um, so I can update it and then I've got a, a equation used as, as a link in this example. So again, uh, enhancement to something that was previously there, but again, now we, we had a lot of uh, users note that, that the previous support was, was a bit limited for them, and hopefully this now will allow, uh, allow users to create more general links and use these equations uh, to, to, to create them. Uh, next, very, very small, but I think useful feature, the run nominal run only. Um, so for people familiar with HyperStudy, um, HyperStudy has the, the the bounds check, or you can run, you can certainly run your nominal run first, or you can do a bounds check kind of approach where it'll run uh, a, a nominal run plus uh, your your design variables tweaked to their their minimum maximum values as kind of a a model check. We don't have full support for the bounds check yet, but we did add this nominal run only, which does. Uh, essentially what uh, what is suggested here. Uh, we've got a DOE set up in this case. Uh, now, if, if I pick uh, the MELS DOE type and I enter zero for my number of runs, we don't run the full DOE, we run just the nominal run, allowing you to, uh, to, to view the nominal run. We'll close this, we'll look at the results explorer. We get the results from the nominal run only, and you can, like, like always with your explorations, you can, you can interrogate the results, you can look at your response values, and I think what's shown last year, yeah, you can even you can load the results and interrogate them, and it's a good uh, a good utility to to check your model, uh, make sure your setup is is good before you go ahead and commit to running a you know a 500 run DOE or or, or a 100 run uh, optimization, for example. So again, I think a a small enhancement, but I think it's a, it's a pretty useful tool. So uh, glad that it's there. Uh, next, generic response. So this one was uh, this was requested initially by uh, the NVH uh, director team, uh, who do use Design Explorer within their NVH uh, workflow. Um, so this was a request, a specific request from them uh, that that uh, the team has provided, and what it allows you to do is to create responses from from external files as as references. So it's almost like again for for people familiar with HyperStudy um, using uh, using a, a result file, solve a result file, for example, as a data source. So we we. Um, all along, we we we've not really exposed this kind of feature in Design Explorer, wanting to keep Design Explorer very tight and very seamless and and you know more user friendly um, and 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 so on. Um, but we found that uh, in some ways that was um, it was limiting in a lot of cases. So this allows users uh, if if there's a, a a file type that that maybe we don't support or not natively supported through Design Explorer in the NVH case. Um, running Optistruct or Nastran, uh, you get punch files or PCH file output. And Design Explorer doesn't know how to uh, to, to evaluate responses coming from, from those data sources. Um, so this allows you to use a, a punch file or, or Radios T01 file or LS Dyna D3 plot files, for example. So you can you can create results uh, as responses, excuse me, from from result files that were not previously supported. It also allows for response types not currently supported uh, via the ribbon. So uh, using the 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 HyperWorks readers, uh, we can read information from those files. Uh, for example, uh, I think what's shown in the video that I'll play in a second, um, like a, a Radios T01 file or one of the 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 LS Dyna output files that has energy information in it. If, if we don't have that exposed already or yet. Uh, through the Design Explorer uh, ribbon, but if, if you want to look at kinetic energy or internal energy or something like that, this allows you to create a response uh, from, from a file like that. So let's take a look uh, at this example here. We have a, a DOE setup. The first example uh, is kind of as I described. Maybe we want to look at a, a result type that is supported in Design Explorer, I think in this case, like a displacement or a stress, but we want that source to come from the punch file. So you just go on to the generic response creation uh, and you find the file that has the source information. 
probably from a, a, a maybe from a nominal run uh, that you've already run, and you can create your response based on that. And then a similar file for each run will be used. Uh, the punch file from each run will be used to evaluate uh, the displacement response in this example. So example two is, is similar, but here's an example of a response that's not yet supported by Design Explorer. Um, so the the uh, source file is a, an optistruct.out file, and maybe we're interested in, in the compliance as a response. And it's something that we've actually kind of meant to add to Design Explorer for a while now, and we haven't yet, but now there's a there's a way that you can you can get to that uh, by using a .out file. In this last example here, uh, just switching models, but uh, here's an example uh, that I, I think I already described where um, we want to get a response out of a T01 file that we don't have a response for yet in Design Explorer, like the internal energy or any of the other uh, request values that's that's there in the file. Uh, just also showing here that we have this plot preview feature uh, that you can preview from the uh, the data source, in this case, the .out file. You want to see what the, the response curve looks like. Um, you can you can use that. You can also automatically or, or in one step create an objective or a constraint uh, while creating the response. And, and that was in VH director request, but we've we've brought that over here as well. So you can see in just one step there, um, we've we've sourced the response from the the T01 file, um, the internal energy that we didn't already have. Um, we can preview the plot and then we can create the response and either an objective or a constraint if we want to uh, at the same time. So again, that's another example, I think, of sort of hopefully knocking down those limitations and, and making the the, uh, the solution more general. So hopefully uh, everyone's seeing that. Uh, hopefully that would lower the barrier to entry, so to speak. Uh, if, if that was a limitation, uh, we've had to come back and say, you know, we like Design Explorer, but, you know, in, in my use case, I want to... Uh, you know, I want to look at internal energy or kinetic energy or something like that. And we, we didn't have an answer yet other than, well, we'll have to add that as, a, as an out-of-the-box response. So we still intend to do that sort of thing. But as we do, I think this might be a, a really useful um, intermediate and even long-term solution to, to uh, making those types of responses available to users. And hopefully, again, you know, addressing one more question or one more issue that may have, have prevented um, a, a particular user from using Design Explorer uh, so far. Um, this next one is kind of a usability or, or enhancement, uh, applying design variables to the model. This was already, uh, this was included in the uh, the first, um, first release of Design Explorer in, in Inspire. Uh, and uh, we thought it's a it's a it's a, a tool we should have uh, also in HyperWorks, so we've kind of come back and and put it in here. And again, it it, it does more or less what it says. Uh, you, once you've run uh, an exploration, DOE or optimization, um, and you get all your results, you can just automatically or through this this menu, you can apply the variables from a given run onto the model itself. So it, it can be pretty useful for uh, typically as shown in this image on the left there, you run an optimization, you get all your optimal um, optimal values for your design variables. Um, previously, you would have to go to that run folder if you want and, and find that, that output or, or uh, solver deck and the information certainly exists in there or you'd have to apply it manually to your model. Now you can just right click and, and apply it. Um, and, and it's not just optimal runs, it's it's any run. Let, let's take a look at that. So here's a DOE that's been run. Um, so anyway, you, you can see just a couple of examples here just applying. And I've got some sort of uh, uh, exaggerated shape variables in this in this model, just so you can kind of see them being applied. But we can apply uh, from each run, and you can see the variables just being uh, applied to the model. Here we've got some section variables, so just looking to to see that when I load from each run, you can see the section is updated. So all the variables are updated, just illustrated through a couple examples here. And uh, if, if you want to uh, get back to your nominal run, the nominal run is always there. So you can apply from the nominal run and, and essentially uh, reset your model. OK, so the final enhancement that I mentioned on the first slide there uh, was the uh, updates to the clustering uh, with an eye towards expert AI. So I'm not sure everybody uh, um, is, is really aware of uh, of what the clustering is or what expert AI is. Um, so I, I thought I'd just take a couple slides here that I got from the uh, the EDS team. The EDS engineering data science team provides us all the the technology 
that we use in, in all of the machine learning and AI uh, tool features that we have thus far in, in Design Explorer, like the field prediction uh, and, and the clustering and soon expert AI as well. Uh, in fact, there's more planned, so just uh, stay tuned for more of that. But I, I um, again, I got these slides uh, to help introduce the, the topic a little bit. What is uh, what is expert emulation and, and and clustering and expert AI? So just through a, a, a I guess a, a quick uh, overview, the the expert AI or expert emulation uh, it, it captures an expert or a user's decision making. Uh, in, in a machine learning model, so kind of supervised machine learning, and it allows you to leverage that information to automate the design or optimization process. And, and, and what do we mean by that? Um, let's look at a, just a, a simple example here. I've, I've got a couple examples, and then I will get to the last uh, the last uh, demonstration that I have is, is how it, it, it looks inside of Design Explorer. But through a simple example here, let's take a, just this uh, case of this clip where or maybe we're designing this clip and it's subject to an opening force as shown here and we want to ensure that the clip can withstand the force without breaking so maybe we want to and maybe as you know maybe we want to minimize the mass of the clip take as much material out as we can to to as ever as always to to save on our material cost um so how do we go about doing that? Maybe we want to, uh, but we want to ensure the clip doesn't break, as I said. So maybe we want to uh, to, to run some simulations. We want to look at maybe the the, the opening uh, displacement there, and, and and that and check you know that that displacement. But again, ensuring it doesn't it doesn't break. So we might run some simulations, run a DOE, or we can run an optimization where maybe we want to minimize the mass, and and maybe I don't know we want to maximize that displacement uh, to get the 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 most displacement without breaking and we get a typical kind of scatter plot that's shown here in the middle um but we get a number of potential potentially uh potential designs um but we take a look at those and, and maybe some break some don't and when we, we you know how do we choose the best one so this is where we can use the clustering which through unsupervised machine learning um the results can be can be clustered into those that break and, and those that don't break. But this this clustering is just it's 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 unlabeled. You know, it doesn't know break and don't break. It just clusters them. Uh, there's no judgment or no evaluation made. And that's where the expert comes in. So now an expert or the user uh, can look at these results or these clusters and, and visualize them and see that, well, one set of them break and one set don't. So cluster two is desirable. Cluster one is is not. And then we can we can leverage that information in an optimization where we constrain the optimization. We can minimize mass, but constrain the optimization to try to ensure that the optimal result falls into the, the don't break uh, cluster number two in that case. So that's kind of a, a, a uh, an example sort of illustrating a typical process. But here's an even even uh, more real example uh, that comes from a, a, a paper or a case study that was presented by BMW at a recent conference. So I thought I'd show this one too. It gives a bit of a, a more uh, real world, I think, example. It's a powerful example. Uh, and then the, in fact, the the last example or the, the, the video that I'll play for you will kind of run very similarly to this example. So in this case, they've used expert AI. Um, oh, and I should note that expert AI is its own tool today uh, that was developed and, and maintained by the EDS team. Um, and it is, it is there, there's uh, this presentation was done. There's a white paper based on this case study, I believe, uh, and, and other other customers and use cases who are, are either evaluating or using expert AI. But our, our goal uh, in this context is to take these these tools and features and, and bring them into Design Explorer. So that's another um, another avenue that, that this uh, technology can be leveraged by by all Design Explorer users. So okay. So in this case, uh, it, it's pretty much uh, similar as the previous slide. They, there's a, a side impact uh, scenario um, where they want to ensure that the intrusion around, uh, I think it's an EV battery, though it could just as well be a gas tank. They, they want to uh, ensure that that intrusion is minimized. Uh, at the same time as ever, we want to minimize the mass of the vehicle. So we want to keep things light, but uh, make sure that the intrusion requirement is met. And the, these criteria can typically compete with one another. 
and, and they result in, in a, a typical sort of optimization where if I want to minimize mass but uh, and minimize intrusion at the same time, I get I get results that look you know typically like this where there's this so-called Pareto front uh, here where um, potential optimal designs uh, are, are the, the dark green ones that are shown in the slide along this Pareto front. And now a user can look at these various designs along the front and view the trade-off between weight and intrusion in this case and, and, and pick a uh, interrogate them for, for possible feasible designs. But in this example, which is, is uh, often typical, as indicated by the, the traffic lights here, red, green, and yellow, um, there, uh, even though the, the results may be uh, non-dominated or, or possibly a best result, uh, the member may deform in such a way, this cross member, uh, so as to possibly puncture uh, the gas tank or, in, you know, or, or break into the battery bank because of the type of deformation, even though the, you know, it may be an otherwise uh, feasible design. So the point is the optimization measurables don't always fully describe the behavior. And, and that's in this case where, again, where expert AI comes in. So again, using this, this clustering, which is unsupervised, um, the, the results uh, can be clustered uh, based on their deformation. And that's what's shown in this middle portion here, the red, green, and the yellow, the light, lighter colors indicate um, the, the clustering being done. But again, this is, it's unlabeled. Uh, the, 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 the machine learning model doesn't know, you know, it knows that they're clustered red, green, and yellow, well, in, into three, three clusters in this case. But the expert comes in and can look and, and view uh, that uh, each of those represents a particular type of deformation, sort of as shown in the, in the left-hand slide here, but now they're well clustered together. The user can add the classification to that saying, okay, well, the green one is the one I want and the yellow one may be less so and the red one is not acceptable at all. And then we can use expert AI and that classification, again, as I mentioned, to say, well, I want to rerun this. I want to run the optimization. I want to minimize the weight and intrusion. But using the classification, I want to, again, attempt to, to guarantee with some probability that, uh, that my result falls into this green category. And, and that's what's, what's been achieved in this example. Uh, the side note, uh, it, it turned out, if I remember correctly, that these, these now, uh, these green results here all conform to the desired cluster or classification as shown here. Um, there's still the trade-off between the weight and intrusion, but now the user can pick from, from, uh, from um, you know, acceptable deformation modes. And finally, I think what was observed in this case, if I remember, is, is these results actually improved somewhat over uh, over the, the original results, even when the, the valid cluster was chosen. And I'm not sure we know why. I think uh, the suspicion is that because now the, the optimizer was able to focus more simply within the given area, because it knew now, in a sense, you know, I, I only want... Uh, answers that, that conform to this this classification and, and given that it could sort of you know quote unquote focus more in that area and i believe the answer actually improved uh, beyond what they initially had seen okay so that is uh, a little overview of, of expert emulation clustering clustering uh, and, and the expert ai so what have we done in design explorer and we're still kind of moving along this path uh, as you'll see in the in the video in a moment is um, we, we've, we've exposed the clustering uh, and the classification uh, for 2022.3. And I think that's already very powerful. Uh, I'll, I'll play the video in just a moment and, and we'll just kind of walk through how it looks and how it works. But a couple of things to look for uh, as it plays, and you can kind of, it's, it's, you can see even in the picture, is, is clustering was kind of hidden before in the scatter plot uh, tab there. Uh, of the results explorer we've now pulled it out into its own its own area it's it's entitled clusters right now because we don't have the full expert ai functionality but that's coming uh it's already uh work in progress and well on its way um, um and it will certainly be uh targeted for for the next uh for 2023 um at, at which point i anticipate this this tab will change its name to expert AI. Hopefully that's not uh, not confusing, but I wanted to give a little background on it, uh, where the clustering has come from, where it is, and then where it's going. So let's take a look. Uh, the video that I'm gonna play, I think this one's about a two minute video, and this is the last thing I have to show. Um, 
uh, you'll see at some point at, a, at a, a point in the video, it's going to it'll transition. I'll, I'll point it out. It'll be obvious. And then I'm going to there's some uh, a note up there about uh, some of the stuff that's work in progress and coming in 2023. So I want to make a demarcation there. 2022.3 has the clustering uh, and the visualization and you'll you'll see that. Uh, and then for 2023 is where we're going to put in the, the leveraging of that classification to actually run the optimization. That's shown in the video because, as I said, it's pretty far along. It just wasn't quite ready uh, for 2023. Um, so, again, I, I think what's there is, is, is hopefully very powerful and useful. OK, so this is just going to, again, for some context, this is a, a front rail on this Venza model. So it is very similar to that BMW side impact case. This is a front impact kind of uh, simulation. We've run an optimization here uh, where we have uh, a multi-objective. So again, very similar to the case I just mentioned. Uh, in this case, uh, minimizing the mass. Uh, and we've chosen to uh, to, to try uh, as, as an example to maximize the internal energy, so the energy absorbed in the, in the rail during the event. So as as noted in the previous slide, with a multi-objective optimization, we get a number of you know runs on the Optima on that Pareto front there, uh, which exhibit the trade-off between our our uh, our two objectives. So we can come to the scatter plot tool here, and we can plot those uh, against one another. There's the mass and the internal energy. We can show just the, uh, the the runs along that Pareto front, and then the user could interrogate these runs. So we're able to really simulate this process that we saw in the in that BMW example. We can interrogate each of these runs. We can see uh, you know which run corresponds to which. We can come back to Results Explorer here or to the summary uh, panel, and we can load the results for some runs of interest. And what we'll do is we'll load those side by side, and then we're going to look at that, uh, you know, the uh, the deformation mode there, and 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 see how they how they compare to one another to help us choose our our desired um, our desired result or our our, our desired uh, optimal uh, result. And we can observe here just from looking at the results that we have two different deformation modes, and you know, for for various design reasons. Uh, one may be desirable to the other. We want the 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 um, the rail in this case to to buckle or to crumble either in front of or behind of uh, of a certain component or or um, or or, or uh, part of the model. So this is where again this is where expert AI comes in or the clustering in this case comes in. So we've come to the cluster tab here uh, and and. We, we want to create a data set. So this was this was not available previously in, in uh, previous releases. Um, we, we had the clustering, but we were limited in the types of, of uh, result types that we could cluster on and how it was exposed. Now we've, we've taken what's in expert AI, that standalone tool, and we started to bring um, much, if not all of the functionality into Design Explorer. So we can create our, our data set used for clustering based on any of the result types that are available. In this case, we're going to use displacement. Uh, we pick our, we're interested in clustering based on the last time step, and then we can even filter the parts. This is something that was missing uh, previously in Design Explorer as well. Uh, typically, maybe in, th in this example, we're just running the rail itself uh, independently. But in a, in a, in a, a fuller or, or more real example, we might run the full vehicle in a front impact scenario. But then be interested in clustering just the parts, you know, that are that are uh, appropriate for this rail. So we can use the part filtering for that. Uh, in this example, we're just going to use all the parts because we have everything. So we've created our our uh, our data set, and now we come back to the clustering panel, and we can see uh, the clusters have been created. We can select the number of clusters. We have a couple other tools here. I'll just mention they're not shown in the video, but are useful. These were not in, uh, well, at least the, the the dendrogram was not available in Design Explorer previously. We've included that now, uh, and that's a useful tool for, for users when determining uh, how they want to cluster their model and whether the, the, the number of clusters and the types of clusters are, are, are appropriate. Or, uh, or the best. So um, we've we've selected four clusters in this case. You can see uh, we can see the number of runs that are in each cluster, and then through the color coding, we can still see them on the on the scatter plot on the upper right. In this case, and then we can we have some visualization tools. Uh, in this case, to animate, if we want to animate all the clusters, we can do that, and we can let that play, and we can interrogate, and we can see that the clustering, how the clustering looks, and we can see uh, what's animating is is all the runs 
uh, one after another on a given cluster. Um, so let me pause there because that's that's what we can do for 2022.3. Um, but using that information, the user can then more, uh, I guess not shown here, uh, you can click on a given cluster. Maybe we've determined cluster three is the one that that is the desirable uh, shape for us. Um, what's coming in the video here uh, in 2023, I'm going to let play and I'm going to show how we can actually use that in an optimization. Uh, that's not available in 2022.3, but what is available is already up to what's shown here. You could pick on cluster three um, and you kind of do your classification and your, your quote unquote optimization yourself. You, this already helps you to refine uh, your, your number of um, potential runs down to just 11 here from the, I think there's 50 in there, uh, from the 50 that you ran in your optimization. Now we know that 11 of those uh, correspond to the desirable cluster. And then we can go back using our, our Pareto uh, scatter plot or, or our summary table. Um, if you click on cluster three, you would see which runs those correspond to, and then that would help you to choose your run. So that's 2022.3. Let me just let this finish out. What, what is coming is then you can actually create a constraint based on that, which is what we're doing here. And we can say we want uh, to ensure that our, our, uh, our output run uh, with a probability of greater than 70% corresponds to cluster three. We can then run optimization. We can support different types of optimization here. Um, let that run. And then we can view uh, the optimal results here, where now we have a single optimal run where we can see 77 percent uh probability that it's going to so it, it minimizes mass maximizes the intrusion uh sorry maximizes the energy and at 76 percent probability uh will will conform to that that cluster uh deformation that we were interested in uh, that classification uh and then we could go ahead and we could uh you could do any of the, the other uh, Design Explorer features there. At that point, we can we can interrogate that run, ensure that it does conform, uh, and, and and so on. Okay, let me jump back to the presentation, and I think that was the last one. So just in in, in quick summary here, uh, here's just another recap of the uh, the enhancements that we have for 2022.3, the property assignment um, by design variables, or excuse me, property assignment design variables, where the property of a component or element. Uh, can be varied uh, throughout the, the uh, exploration. The enhanced links, so more generalized links now, including using equations within design variable links, the ability to run a nominal run only to validate your, your model uh, before uh, committing to, to running the whole uh, exploration. Uh, the generic response creation, where you can create responses from external data sources, from other files, so either file types that are not uh, yet or not supported by Design Explorer and response types that we didn't previously or don't yet have, I should say, uh, can now be created. Uh, applying the design variables to the model uh, from the results uh, feature is there. And finally, as we just saw the cluster enhancements, we saw uh, the clustering uh, enhancements to 2022.3 and also kind of a sneak peek there of expert AI, uh, which is coming very soon. So I think that's it. That's uh, that that's a, a summary and and, and uh, some details about the enhancements that are coming for 2022.3. Uh, I hope you found it useful and informative. If you have any questions, I'm happy to to try and take them now or in the future. And uh, thanks again.